What is the Bible? What is it worth? Basic instructions before leaving earth. Life is full of struggles and it is hard. But we are made in the image of God. Lord, I have to praise you to the moon and back. I don't see anything wrong with that. It's me you help. It's me you kill. It's me you move. It's me you groove. It's me you touch. I love you so much. Oh, my Lord, I have to say thank you. Open your eyes. What do you see? Have you inventoried your life lately? Oh yeah, I have something else to say. Welcome to HBS and DWJ. Oh lordy lordy, to God goes the glory. God goes the glory, the glory, glory. All right, welcome to HBS and DWJ podcast. I am Jerry Joyce, your host. Our mission, to provide the knowledge that will train sisters and brothers in Christ to spread God's love and create disciples. Our vision, to share all resources that will aid in the knowledge necessary for the building of God's kingdom. The adversary does not know what to do with those who possess integrity. We are not human beings on a spiritual journey. On the contrary, We are spiritual beings on a human journey. With that being said, we will open up this Holy Bible study session with prayer, so please join in. O Holy Eternal Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it is once again that we come unto you as humble as we know how, realizing that you are more than we can comprehend. Thank you for being our everything. You are our life. We ask that you help us to recognize those who are crafty, trying to influence and deceive us into going down the wrong paths to fit their agenda. It is our prayer that you strengthen us to reverse those actions and introduce those who are crafty to you who dwells within us. Lord God, help us to admit our wrongs by bringing them to you right away. We pray for your hedges of protection around all hostages, around all wounded, around all captives all over the world. Thank you for your continued graces and mercies. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Welcome again to HBS and DWJ Podcast. And again, I am your host, Jerry Joyce. Our scripture of the week is... Revelation chapter 22 verse 16 King James Version I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. All right, here Jesus had sent his angel to deliver the message of Revelation to the Apostle John. He said the message of Revelation is for the churches. Presumably, churches should be teaching and heeding the contents of uh, this last book of the Bible. To ignore the book of Revelation is tantamount to rejecting the gift Jesus has presented to the churches. This verse also tells us Jesus is the root and the descendant of David and the bright morning star. Jesus was born as a descendant of King David, as found in Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, as well as chapter, well, verses 6 through 16. He is uh, the rightful heir to the kingdom God promised to David in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 through 16. The angel Gabriel uh, prophesied that Jesus would reign over his kingdom from the throne of his father, David as found in Luke chapter 1, verses 31 through 33. But Jesus is also the bright morning star. All right, now Malachi chapter 4, verse 2 promises Israel that the son of the righteousness, or the son of righteousness, will arise with healing in its wings. Revelation chapter 22, verse 16 identifies Jesus as the bright morning star. Just as the morning star appears before the sun rises, so Jesus will come for the church before he returns to restore Israel to himself. 
All right. Our topic today is origin of the nations of the world discussion. Genesis 10 is sometimes called the table of nations. It describes the generations that follow from Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, along with the nations that come from them. And, uh, and the regions in which they settled before the Tower of Babel. Alright. This chapter is a slightly different take on genealogy. Rather than focusing on lineage, this passage defines the boundaries of these different tribes of people. Instead of following a narrow chain of father-son relationships deep into history, this chapter explains a broad network of cousins following a shallow chain of brotherly relationships. The purpose is to establish the various kingdoms which will come in play later in Genesis. Once again, this passage, is, this passage introduces what is sometimes called the Table of Nations. In addition to listing some of the descendants of uh, Noah's um, sons, the uh, chapter also mentions the lands and nations that formed among these descendants. This is the purpose God intended for mankind and his commands after the flood to repopulate the earth as found in Genesis chapter 9 verse 7. As part of his will, God had promised to never again destroy the earth with a flood as we can find in Genesis chapter 9 verse 11. It's an awesome thought to realize that the descendants of these individuals became peoples of the ancient world, the nations that Israel would eventually interact with as a nation themselves. The incidents of the prior chapter have a drastic impact on these future generations. Alright, now since Ham dishonored Noah, as we can find in Genesis chapter 9 verse 24, his son Canaan was cursed. Now, the outworkings um, of that curse will not be clear until many generations later when Israel arrives in the uh, promised land. The passage is clear that these sons were born to Noah's three sons after the flood and not before the flood. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and move on to our other section. Do you have the complexion for the protection? It is now time for our life reflection. All right. The Genesis flood narrative tells how Noah and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, together with their wives, were saved from the deluge to repopulate the earth. Shem's descendants, as found in Genesis chapter 10, verse 21 through 30, gives one list of descendants of Shem. In chapter 11, verses 10 through 26, a second list of descendants of Shem names Abraham, and thus the Arabs and the Israelites. In the view of some 17th century European scholars, e.g. John Webb, the Native American peoples of North and South America, Eastern Persia, and the Indias descended from Shem, possibly through his descendant Joktan. Some modern creationists identify Shem as the progenitor of Y-chromosomal haplogroup IJ, and hence haplogroups I, common in Northern Europe and J, common in Middle East. Ham's descendants, the forefather of Cush, Egypt, and Put, and of Canaan, whose lands include portions of Africa. The Aboriginal Australians and indigenous peoples of New Guinea have also been tied to Ham. The etymology of his name is uncertain. Some scholars have linked it to terms connected with divinity, but a divine nor semi-divine status for Ham is unlikely. Japheth's descendants, his name is associated with mythological or mythological Greek titan Lepidus, and his sons include Javon, the Greek-speaking cities of Ionia. 
In Genesis chapter 9, verse 27, it forms a pun with the Hebrew root YPH. May God make room, the hip fill of the YPH root for Japheth, that he may live in Shem's tents and Canaan may be his slave. There are modern descent, or these are the modern descendants of Noah's sons, the beginning of the origin of the nations of the world. All right, let's move on. Check this out, out, out. All right. If you happen to find yourself wanting to support a minority business, try Atlanta Breakfast Club. Atlanta Breakfast Club is good food and company's pride and joy. Having the best breakfast in Atlanta and the best team of people who support the business model of good food and company makes us the premier spot in Midtown. The leadership team of good food and company brings a broad and diverse set of experience and talents. Our team is united by love, loyalty, and dedication to food and the hospitality industry. You can find this business online at atlbreakfastclub.com. That's A-T-L-B-R-E-K-F-A-S-T-C-L-U-B.com. That is atlbreakfastclub.com. Let's move on. Hey, bro. What time is it, man? It's now time to answer comments from HBS and DWHA website. All right, let's start off with Lion Cowley. Lion Cowley says, Thank you for sharing this great review of Genesis 10 and reminding the reader of the importance of family and the table of nations. Anybody who wants to have a fair appraisal of the human family will benefit from reading this post. It is interesting to read how the sons of Noah multiplied and had more sons after the flood, and that Genesis 10 starts and concludes with the genealogy of family, or of the family. All right, hello again, Lion Cowley, as usual. Thank you for your continued support and all of the comments that you have made on any of my websites. My aim is to share the things I am learning with everyone who may be interested. And thank you for helping me continue to uh, grow in the ways of your support. And it is a great pleasure to learn that you find the call of Abram, the sons of Japheth, Ham, Shem, to be an interesting read. Continue blessings upon you, my friend. All right, let's move on to Steve Steve. Steve Steve says, This study on Genesis 10 from God in Our Lives Every Day offers a profound and engaging analysis of this often overlooked chapter. The author's passion for understanding and sharing the Word of God is evident, creating an immersive experience for readers. Through providing historical context and thoughtful insights, this study encourages a deeper understanding of the biblical text. All right, highly recommend it for those seeking to delve into the intricacies of Genesis chapter 10. All right, hello there, Steve. Thanks again for taking the time to stop by and comment on this HBS and DWJ podcast episode. I agree with you that it takes passion for understanding and sharing the word of God. This is not for the weak. It takes strength to realize we are not in control and we must depend on God while choosing to accept him in our lives every day. I am very thankful that you received this study as an encouraging, deeper understanding of biblical text. Please stop by again and blessings, my friend. All right, let's move on to Ingrid Robbins. Ingrid Robbins says, Woo! I am getting all of your articles to comment on. It is great. I love it. Love it. Summarizing the story block. Ethnologists and anthropologists need this chapter on genealogies, the origin of countries. 
the lost ten tribes of Israel were not the sons of Japheth or Ham. Instead, Genesis 10 tells the lineages of Noah's three sons, Japheth, verses 2 through 5, Ham, verses 6 through 20, and Shem, verses 2 through 32. God presents rejected lines first, drops them, and then presents the acceptable line, leading to Jesus Christ. Genesis 11 recounts the Tower of Babel and the spread of the nations, whereas Genesis chapter 9 narrates God, Noah, and his sons after the flood. Genesis 10 lists Japheth, Ham, and Shem's descendants. You can feel f- you can feel the passion of the author in the story. It is amazing how the people lived and the way they related to God in their daily lives. God bless you always, Elkie. All right. Hello, Ingrid. Thank you for stopping by and showing interest in this HBS and DWJ platform. I appreciate you appreciating this episode as great. Thank you so much for your educational and inspirational comments as they add value to the information that is already here. Spiritual growth is what this platform is all about. Feel free to listen to the HBS and DWJ podcast on iHeart, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Blessings to you as well, my friend. All right, let's move on to Rochelle. Rochelle says, Hi there, Jerry. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, understanding, and wisdom regarding incorporating God into our lives every day. Although I was raised in a Christian home, I needed to find out about God on my own. Once I found clarity about the power of God, I was able to develop my relationship with Him. As I have grown closer to God, it has become evident that God is present in every facet of my life he guides and protects me through all of the trials and tribulations that come my way Rochelle all right hello Rochelle thank you for your comment on this HBS and DWJ podcast episode you are most certainly welcome for the sharing of knowledge understanding and wisdom yes God is our everything Blessings, my friend. All right, let's move on to Skamalka. Skamalka says, Hello, I have been exploring various topics to expand my knowledge, and I stumbled upon your article about the genealogies and origins of different nations in the world. This is a subject that I'm not very familiar with, but it seems to be quite significant in understanding the history of different cultures and societies. I noticed that the article talks about the genealogies of Noah's three sons, Japheth, Ham, and Shem, and how their descendants contributed to the formation of various nations. It's fascinating to think about how these genealogies play a role in the interaction between different groups of people throughout history. I'm curious to know more about the significance of these genealogies and how um, they connect to the broader context of human history. Could you please explain why these genealogies are important and how they influence the development of different nations and cultures? Hmm, thank you. All right, hello there, Skamalka. Thanks again for stopping by the HBS and DWJ website turn podcast. Family list and genealogies are prominent or are a prominent part of First and Second Chronicles and other Old Testament books. Um, these genealogies were obviously important to Israel and the Jews kept meticulous records. One reason family history was important to Israel is that it proved one's identity as a Jew, a partaker of the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and part of the uh, people chosen by God. If a person was not a Jew, 
he or she could not truly be a Jewish citizen and participate in all of the aspects of Jewish life and culture. All right, now, family history was also important due to where one lived. Each of the Jewish tribes had received a land inheritance in Israel. Now, for a person to inherit land in a particular tribal area required evidence that he was a descendant or had, was descended from that particular tribe. Genealogies were essential to proving whether a Jewish male could serve in the Levitical priesthood. Priest could only be from the tribe of Levi um, and descendants of Aaron, the brother of Moses. If a man could not prove his connection, he was unable to serve as a priest. A family's history could also show an affiliation with people of significance. All right, and thank you again for your continued support with helping HBS and DWJ spread God's love. Uh, Spread God's love as well as spread God's word. Blessings to you, my friend. But for now, that's what Origin of the Nations of the World discussion is all about. With that being said, we will close out with prayer. Heavenly Father, we're preparing to start a new journey in life. Feelings of fear and the unknown have caused us to doubt this path. We ask ourselves if this is what you want for us. We are listening to you, or are we making this decision out of selfish reasons? Are we saying yes to this new journey just to please others? Or are we listening to your will for our lives? Father, guide us. Give us wisdom, discernment, and revelation in this new day. We pray that you make the rest of our days the best of our days. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for tuning in. The United States, the Philippines, Saudi Arabia, Canada, Nigeria, the United Kingdom, Hong Kong, the United Arab Emirates, Japan, Singapore, Greece, South Korea, South Africa, Australia, Ghana, France, Malaysia, Malta, Mexico, Nigeria, Spain, Asia, Beijing, Bangladesh, Belgium, Botswana, Brazil, Bulgaria, Colombia, Czechia, Dominican Republic, Finland, Germany, Grenada, Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Ireland, Israel, Italy, Jamaica, Kenya, Kosovo, Lesotho, Liberia, Netherlands, New Zealand, Pakistan, Peru, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Singapore, South Korea, Sri Lanka. Thank you all for your support. HBS and DWJ is eternally grateful. Please stay tuned for other discussions of the show. You can message HBS and DWJ at 704-412-8692. That's 704-412-8692. You can find HBS and DWJ Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, Our Heart Radio, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, Cashbox, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Gia Savon. I would like to thank Our Heart Radio for this opportunity. You can find HBS and DWJ Podcast most anywhere you receive your podcast. You can also find HBS and DWJ on our website at www.GodInOurLivesEveryday.com That's www.GodInOurLivesEveryday.com Or just hashtag HBS and DWJ That's hashtag HBS and DWJ Don't forget to check out the HBS and DWJ store on GodInOurLivesEveryday.com You can also find us on Facebook at HBS and DWJ. All right, remember to put God first and everything else will follow. Appreciate your steps in life. They are the reason you can look back at where you came from. To God goes the glory, the glory, glory, 